All right, so variance for our um, discrete probability distributions uses this formula here. And it's a measure of spread, which is saying how wide out is our data set. If we've got a data set that looks like, I'm going to use a continuous data set just because they're easier to draw. If that's my data set, and my other data set looks like this, which one has the lowest variance, the orange or the purple? The lowest variance. Orange. Orange is narrow, which means there's less spread. Cool? So the data is more closely around the mean. Same mean, but the purple's got a wider variance. Okay? So if this was an exam, for example, um, and the mean was 60, every kid in the exam got 60, um, but we had a mark up here of a 70, right? Which would be harder to achieve, a 70 on the orange exam or a 70 on the purple exam? Seven on the orange exam, correct? Much like if we had a student who scored a 50, that would be much more significant on the lower end on the orange exam, cool? It's how special you are, essentially. So that's what spread allows us to do, is talk about how significant a data is. So if I saw someone who scored a 70 on the orange exam, they're probably a candidate that I'd like to employ. Does that make sense? Whereas a 70 on the purple exam, they're still pretty good. I'll probably shortlist them, but I'm not going to give them the job straight away. Happy with that? Um, so for variance, it is an important measure of, of, that we, we get out of our um, data, and it tells us a lot about how significant a data is or how widespread a set of data is. This is the equation. It's a bit more complicated. We can probably agree on that. Now the first thing that you need to do is to add a new row to our table. So if I'm doing this, and I'll come over to this example here which we used before, we have to put a, a, a column or a row, sorry, not a column, above our table. And all we're doing is squaring the values that we've got for x. So my first line of working is e x squared. And I use my new values with the same formula we did before, but with x squared now. Cool? So that simply equals the sum of x squared by pi, just like before, which we know will be the same value. So 0 times 1 on 8 plus 1 times 3 on 8 plus 4 times 3 on 8 plus, is it 9? Times 3 on, no, 1 on 8. Got that? Everyone get that in the room or not? Yeah. So do you see what I've changed about the process so far? All I've done is I've replaced the x values with x squared. I then calculate that. That should be able to be done without a calculator. Great, 24 over 8, which is 3. Well done, everyone. Good non, good tech, free skills. Nine plus three is? 12, so we've got the 3 and the 9. 4 times 3 is? 12 plus 12 is? Divided by 8? 3. Okay, so that's our EX squared, but that's not our variance. For our variance, and I'll do this here, we'll do it in orange. So variance is equal to EX squared, which was that value there, minus EX squared. So the expected value that we had before, so we should have 3 minus 1.5 squared, which equals, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm sure someone can tell me, I think it's 0.75. Yeah, it's 0.75. Okay, someone mentioned before, before we're packing up, someone mentioned before standard deviation. Does anyone know the relationship between standard deviation and variance? Cool? We'll come back to that tomorrow. See ya.